Hi, welcome to Nourishing Body and Soul, the podcast. Get ready to revitalize your mind, body, and soul. We're here to inspire women who are looking to break free from old patterns and ideas to create a life of increased confidence and improved health. Say goodbye to limiting beliefs and hello to new possibilities. So kick back, get ready to have some fun, and let's dive in. We'll uncover tools and insights that can help you build a life that's truly nourishing body and soul. Hi, I'm Tracy. And I'm Victoria. And we're glad we're here with us today. You're here with us today. We're glad we're here too. Yes. We're all here <laughs> together sharing this yeah. very safe space yes. we call the internet. Yes. So yes. safe it is. Yes. Yes. So nothing but warm fuzzies and sunshine yeah, all nothing. around. Yeah. That's it. Flowers, yeah. cat videos. Yeah. Oh, oh. Candy videos. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Those yeah. candy videos are awesome. They are. Yes, they are. <laughs> Yep. Mm -hmm. So today we're talking about another bear principle. videos in general are awesome. <laughs> Just bear. I love bear videos where they're going around like eating food at people's houses. Uh, yeah. You know, I which is terrible. If you've had somebody bear <laughs> eat food at your house, I apologize. That probably is a traumatic experience, but it's fun to watch. It looks like it's superhuman. Like the bears open the fridge and take the food out. Yeah. It, yes. I'm saying. I'm just saying it relates. <laughs> it does. It, it does. relates. Because we're talking about another principle of intuitive eating today, which is... Uh, <laughs> the first principle is bears are right. fun. Bears are fun to watch eat. Yes, yeah. we're talking about eating today. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. And it's fun to watch bears eat. <laughs> but that's not what we're... For about. us. That's not what our topic is today. No, bears <laughs> eating. Yeah. We have no bear videos for you, alas. But we do have an entertaining story to start with. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we're talking about hunger cues and as we were talking about this this would keep up with the story so i'm gonna well, let her tell this story <laughs> okay well we're talking about hunger cues and what what would you do anyway i was a very strange child i'm sure that that is a surprise to no one but i was a very strange child and strange or just sassy and i didn't get in trouble very often and i was really i was a pretty entitled little kid though so anyway i did something and the the the, the teak monitor whatever they were called mm -hmm. the yard monitor yard duty. yeah 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 the yard duty monitor was gonna write me up and they had called pink slips so this write. is like fourth grade right yeah fourth grade yeah. fourth grade yes <laughs> this is like junior in college no. <laughs> yes this is this fourth is grade school. this is not high school <laughs> yeah this is fourth grade so anyway so I don't even remember what I did this is how like stupid it was and the your dude is like I'm gonna write you a pink slip and I'd never gotten a pink slip before so I was being sassy and I was like no you can't write me a pink slip I deserve a warning other people get warnings before they get their first pink slip I deserve a warning. I haven't even had a warning and she's like nope you're getting a pink slip da, da, da. and I say if you give me that pink slip I'm gonna eat it so <laughs> she wrote me the pink slip and I said if I eat this then I don't get the trouble and she's like yep you have to eat it all I ate the entire pink slip because I'm that weird. I ate the whole pink slip. Anyway, years. <laughs> no, it's terrible. I was so entitled. <laughs> I should have just done detention like a cool kid instead of being no. like a dork for the entire of my life. No, this is way cooler. This is way cooler. It's not way cooler. But like years later, um, someone found me on Facebook. One of my friends found me on friends. And she's like, first thing she says to me is, do you remember when you ate that pink slip? She goes, that was so cool. And there was a comment. See? Cool. <laughs> well, I, it wasn't cool. I mean, maybe. I didn't get sick or anything, but it did take a while. <laughs> I remember that. Took the rest of recess to eat. Anyway, and so, but she had made a comment. So it wasn't like a DM where I, you yeah. know, there's like made a comment. It's like, yeah, I remember when you made that pink slip? And there were a couple other people who were like, yeah, I can't believe you made that pink slip. Da, da, da. Now, see, would they be Not saying that if you had just done the detention? No. No, they wouldn't. No, so but I would pay attention to my cues. And my cues were as an entitled little child. My, my cue was, I will do whatever to not get in trouble. <laughs> including strange things. I'm sure that variations of that, like, experience, like, to have gone on my whole life i'm sure i've tried to get out of trouble in all kinds of ways which would have been easier to just 
to have the consequences instead i like made shenanigans happen so that i boring didn't have to yeah this, boring that is boring this is why you have so many good stories though I and we've done a lot of i've done a lot of weird things <laughs> One thing about doing a lot of weird things that's nothing to do with eating cues, but life cues, is if you put yourself in some crazy situations, like you have expect unexpected benefits. So, <laughs> for instance, I put myself in crazy situations at work mm-hmm. in tech companies, especially tech companies, and unexpected benefits and some not expected benefits. Ah, uh, well, all expected <laughs> craziness. Yeah. <laughs> and there you go so yeah. you want interesting stories of your life there you go you want to talk a lot at parties be called the storyteller yeah put yourself in some weird situations <laughs> you can bet weirdness will happen yes this be is safe true. though be safe. <laughs> that's a good, a good idea i haven't always been safe but yeah be safe uh, okay but so this is an example a very amusing example of not eating according to honoring your hunger <laughs> Her, oh. her hunger was for not getting in trouble. Yes, my <laughs> hunger was my hunger was not a physical, like yeah. nutritional hunger. Yes. It was a spiritual hunger <laughs> of redemption or something. There you go. Uh-huh. So you shall stop. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so hunger but cues. Actually, and this it sounds so basic to say, but I mean if you think about it. <laughs> It sounds like you're like, I don't know. I don't know. One of the teenagers. Basic. That's it's so basic. Ba- it's so basic to say this, but, you know, eating when you're hungry. Um, but Eating they, when you're hungry. Yeah. On, just eating according to your hunger sounds pretty basic. Yes. However, yes. Um, it it's not because we've basically been kind of trained out of this, especially by diet culture. We're trained out mm-hmm. of that. Um and for a lot, a lot of people, we don't even recognize our hunger, hunger cues anymore mm-hmm. because we're so removed from it because we haven't attached our eating to our hunger. That's why it always would kill me when I was like, oh, here, take this supplement. It curbs yeah. your appetite. It's like, well, if I was only eating when I was hungry, that could help. Yeah. But it's not the fact that I'm eating too much when I'm hungry. And so I need to not have the appetite. It's like, I just need to recognize that you know yeah. uh, when i'm eating other times when i'm not hungry that's or, it's not the or appetite that's the problem those those solutions yeah. are not gonna help me sometimes the situation is you're just eating like you're in a situation where you have to eat a ton well, thanksgiving is a good example <laughs> although i don't think you need you to don't have to any kind of hunger cues at thanksgiving but you know you eat and you're you're done being hungry and yet you're still eating yeah Yeah. there there are a lot of times for that and there are times when we don't eat when we ought to eat because we're just i mean it's so easy to just get so for me and i think for many people Mm -hmm. you just get so involved in something i was talking to my sister about this recently and she was saying yeah if i just get started on something in the morning when i get up she's retired now Mm -hmm. um if i just get started on a project or something when i get up in the morning um all of a sudden, like, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm like, oh, I feel kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Oh, I haven't eaten anything yet today. Mm-hmm. Because our we could our hunger cues get mixed yeah. up if we're just not paying attention to them. Mm-hmm. And when we have been, especially if we've been on way too many diets, yeah. Then we're you don't even know what hunger is right, anymore. Right. Like, because it's like I remember hearing years ago, it's like, well, you're just gonna have to get used to being hungry. <clears throat> isn't there a book like called you know, hunger isn't there like a like a really famous book called hunger i don't know maybe oh, i thought you would know not, not one that i'm familiar with but that doesn't mean you have to look it up yeah yeah anyway we're talking oh. about honoring your hunger That's yeah the thing and yeah. like what what we're hungry for which is not always food yeah you know well sometimes we're hungry for comfort or you know whatever's going on mm-hmm. you can be like hmm I could deal with this feeling or I could eat ice cream. And it would, without even recognizing that that's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Without recognizing it. That's what I had a client one time who she was dealing with um, binging after work. And so if we were, we got around to the subject of creativity and she had been a creative person before. I think she, painting was what she had, what she had done. And she hadn't done it in a long time. 
I said, well, give that a try again. And it turned out her job, she had a pretty stressful job and it was one that required a lot of her emotionally as well. Mm -hmm. And so by the time she got home, she just felt like she just wanted to, you know, just be the dopamine, just be, yeah, just be nurtured. And so she was turning to food for that. And even recognize that I don't want to be doing this, but not, why can't I stop doing yeah. this? And once she uh, tapped into her creativity again, binges yes. were gone. Wow. It wasn't even like she That'd had to try to stop binging. Yeah. She just like, she found something else that filled the need that mm -hmm. she was having, which was that her artwork was filling mm -hmm. her up. It was nurturing her. Well, and I'm so sure learning too. Um, learning like her hunger mm -hmm. cues were askew. Mm -hmm. Like learning you yeah. know, from you, like what getting down to the bottom of like why binging was happening yeah yeah i'm sure that helped her so yeah but it was really interesting well even with that though you can have the the understanding of why you're doing something mm -hmm. but still not have the tools to yes. stop doing it or yeah. you feel like you have to fight against it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of dieting is is it's that fight against it mm -hmm. attitude you know yes. you have to eat this exact way mm -hmm. oh but i want the not even necessarily, you know, the salty food or the sweets or whatever. I, I just want more of this meat. No, I can't have more of this meat because this is how much I'm supposed to have. Mm -hmm. And it's that fighting against kind of thing. Adversarial relationship right. with food right. instead of having it just right. be a non-moral um, right. judgment food. Right. It just is this. Right. It's not that sometimes for hunger cues. Right. It's, yeah. And it's, and it's 8 million. It's, it's nurturing right. or punishment or whatever mm -hmm. goes on Gosh. in your mind okay let's let's talk about a few reasons that we eat that we're not hung when we're not hungry okay you've mentioned it so let's just kind of go back and forth one thing one time not necessarily that you but mm -hmm. that a person maybe you maybe not mm -hmm. eats if they're not hungry oh well stress okay stress yeah absolutely yeah uh boredom mm -hmm. um loneliness mm-hmm um this is, and this is a pathetic back and forth. This is a very well, no, sad back and forth. But no, you, you got to know yeah. what you're working with. Yeah. Um, stress, yes. Anxiety can be a little different mm -hmm. take on that. Yeah. Um, I'd say like I deserve it. Mm -hmm. Like I have mm -hmm. just been through something that's mm -hmm. not great. I deserve this. Mm -hmm. so, or I did something so good. Yes. That yeah. I deserve it. I so deserve yeah, it. yeah. I deserve As it. As a reward. Mm -hmm. People so, use that. People use the food as a reward. Mm -hmm. All the time. Yeah, all the time. And champagne. Starting from very young ages. If you yes. finish your piece, then you get to have ice cream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, food as a reward starts real young. And so that kind of um, validation. Well, I would like, what kind of life would you have that your overeating is due to, like, rewards for how good things are? <laughs> <laughs> i'm overeating oh that person who's fat maybe that's how like king henry the eighth got fat <laughs> it was just celebrating non-stop with his gluttonous self yeah maybe, maybe that was a maybe yeah I mean, he had a lot of wives so yeah, there did. could be a lot of joy going on for yeah. him not for anyone else but yeah anyway yeah just saying yeah i don't know if they were all alive at the same no they weren't he killed them right and not all of them no no oh, okay sorry so, satisfying yeah. your hunger yeah <laughs> one life at a time so um <laughs> what else so, <laughs> i got derailed that sorry <laughs> oh i got caught up in the in your eating for reward i forgot what i was gonna say so, next but anyway so there are yeah there are yeah, all kinds of, of things yeah. oh ha just habit oh yeah yeah just habit yeah or time yeah this is time like it's time to eat right <sighs> yeah yeah. Yes. Uh, so all of that combined with we've been dieting and dieting tells us so many different things. Eat only these foods and these amounts at this time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot yes. of them that are like you oh. have a meal mm -hmm. and then at two hours later you have a snack yeah. and then two hours later you have a meal and then two hours later you have a snack and you, your snack should not be any more than this many calories yeah. and then two hours later you have another meal yeah. and then you're done eating for the day that's the close up your kitchen that's or, the jenny craig that uh, was the jenny craig i talked yeah, about there, where they give you three meals and then give you two yeah, snacks yeah, yeah, and yeah. a dessert and yeah. like i didn't want the snacks because when they gave me the they gave me the week's worth of food i like would eat the snacks mm -hmm. 
and then ultimately the dessert and I would be done by Tuesday and I <laughs> all that and I was like I don't want these I told them I don't want these and they're like part of this is learning how to eat at the proper times and regulating your body so you have to have it and I'm like mm, or not mm -hmm. I can leave so thank you yeah that was and that. that's yeah very prescriptive and our body does have the biocircadian rhythm and there are going to be generally speaking a rhythm to our eating however it's not always at 8 a.m you may be hungry for this many calories mm -hmm. at 10 a.m you may have be hungry for this many calories and no deviation you know yeah. which is how that kind of thing and so when we're eating like that or current current diets are more like oh you only eat during these hours of the day and mm -hmm. then nothing else. and oh, so it's intermittent fasting yeah and so prescriptive times of eating mm -hmm. teach us not at all to listen to our bodies. They teach us to listen to something outside of our body for when we're going to eat food. Mm -hmm. And even with the, the, you know, the three meals, two snacks kind of thing, some of them are, no, you need to eat six small meals throughout the day or oh, whatever yeah. it is, but yeah. they're all very prescriptive of this is about how many calories you're going, you should mm -hmm. have at this time of the day mm -hmm. spread out like this. Yeah. And that's just not always how our bodies work. And the big thing is it doesn't teach us to listen to our bodies. It teaches us to take an external mm -hmm. cue and eat according to that external cue. Yeah. So that's the, yeah. so many times, mm -hmm. so many times that, yep. the, that I have eaten completely yes. not according to our hunger cues. So, so let's talk about when we repress our hunger cues for so long, we don't tie our eating to our hunger then what how do we learn to recognize them again i think did yeah. you tell me that um we, were, we had just been talking about this some other time and you had said i didn't i didn't even think about that as being a hunger cue like you had oh, just yeah. things you hadn't even no, my yeah my i like disordered eating so central here <laughs> <laughs> so things <laughs> things that are what are our hunger cues how do we start to recognize them again Mm -hmm. if we have been ignoring them some of them we are very easy when our stomach's growling you know yeah like oh okay i'm mm -hmm. hungry but some other hunger cues can you think of other hunger cues besides that or is this <laughs> disorder man this is like <laughs> nothing but disorder yeah oh um, so this is the binge i'm like binge central <laughs> like i'm better than i was but i'm still a little bingy <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I shouldn't oh. even tell this, but I'm going to anyway. I have been having these like panic attacks mm -hmm. in the middle of the night and I get up and um, we'll have food and I won't remember it. I know it sounds crazy, but like they're serious panic attacks and they're, <clears throat> I'll wake up the next day and there'll be a plate by my bed and I'll think, oh crap thing and so the past three days I was really excited like I thought things were going really well the past three days I hadn't had any of those and mm -hmm. I woke up this morning I bought ice cream yesterday I bought two ice creams my favorite and my mom's favorite for the Super Bowl and because that's where we are in life um and I woke up and there's a whole like obviously eaten ice cream mm. and I went and looked and I had dad yeah mm. so my hunger I'm like it, I'm I don't even know what to do with those hunger cues yeah that's that obviously is not a hunger cue that, no, that's, that's, that's a whole that's a something some, here yeah, yeah. yeah. Some some, something thing. going on is triggering yes that it's a separate yes. thing to be addressed yes yeah, sorry um no <laughs> well I mean I'm just saying yeah. like here's weird things yeah. I eat pink slips and also in the middle of the night I make cheese sandwiches sometimes too yeah kind of dangerous because I really don't remember yeah yeah so anyway so um so you're asking the, wrong, the whole point hunger of cues. all of that was you're asking the wrong person about <laughs> hunger cues. Uh, so hunger cues obviously stomach growling um sometimes we can get like foggy head foggy headed not thinking as clearly making decisions as quickly as normally and um and that's kind of what my sister was noticing i think when she was saying oh finally i just went oh you know I'm not quite thinking as clearly as i was and i'm not i feel a little funny mm -hmm. and but it wasn't until she stopped and went oh oh that's why um and or obviously we've all heard of being hangry 
Yeah. So when we start getting short tempered mm -hmm. or things like that, or just feeling a little bit more emotional and feel more emotional, whether it's anger or something else, mm -hmm. um, or, um, where's some other hunger cues you might not put, um, if, if we pay attention, we can feel our blood sugar dropping. We can feel our energy level changing. Um, we can get a he headaches can be caused not just from lack of water, but also from lack from of food. food. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, that's, yeah. I so all else. these are all different, various kinds of things. And, and your body may have different hunger cues as well. Um, but learning to recognize them again and mm -hmm. looking for them and be a detective. Uh, I think it's mm -hmm. one of the things you, you yeah. talked about before is be a detective. Yeah. Approach it as a detective would not as a, I'm a bad person. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever. This is like, as a detective, I see right. that right. I'm eating when X. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A hundred percent. And so then, and then starting to be able to go, oh, this, when I'm doing this, this is not a hunger cue. This is not a physical hunger cue. So then we can ask if we want to go deeper, then what is the hunger that I'm feeling? What is, what am I hungry for? For this client I talked about earlier, it, that for hungry for nurturing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, it can, we can be hungry for reassurance. We can be hungry for comfort. We can be hungry as comfort food is a term for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> That's not just an imaginary something somebody made up. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can start looking at what is it that we're looking for from that food. And then from there go, okay, well, so is food the best way to meet that need or not? Um, and again, just be a detective and not judging. And, oh my gosh, I, I know I just eat when I'm not hungry. And I know I shouldn't do emotional eating. This is, that's a, such a common term that's used these days. And it's, it's not a hundred percent a bad thing because I, I've gone on this rant before. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, well, the opposite of being, if you're saying that eating with emotion is bad, if you're terming that emotional eating is eating with emotion yeah. is bad, then that would mean that eating without emotion was good. <laughs> That's not the case. Either. Eating is a robot. Also, right, right. No, not usually. Yeah, not the thing. Um, but when we're turning to food to solve a problem that food is not going to solve, yeah. then that's when we're going to go, oh, that's, I'm not hungry for food. I'm hungry for something else. And it's not even like I'm, I advocate only eat when you have physical hunger. Because there are times where, the other day I was in a situation where it was a long time in between meals for me and it mm -hmm. wasn't anything that I had a lot of control over and so um, I mean I did have options I could have gotten something to eat but at that situation it would have been not the better choice and so I went way longer I was very hungry and put off that hunger cue until the, an appropriate time to eat next came up or there are times where it's like, all right, I'm not really hungry right now, but I know if I don't eat now, mm -hmm. the next time I'm going to have to eat is too many hours away. Yeah. And so we, it's this balance of do what makes sense, but just, our body. yeah, learning to listen and learning to look for our own cues, um, for when we're hungry, as opposed to when the clock says we're supposed to eat or when whatever particular diet we're supposed to eat or how much we're supposed to eat at that mm -hmm. given time. Um, you know, getting partway into meal and going, okay, am I still hungry? Is yeah. this just what I think I should eat? Cause that's like a meal size portion or getting to the end of a meal and going, Oh, I want more. Do I want more because I'm still hungry or do I want more? Cause it just, this tastes really good, yeah. you know? Yeah. And just asking those kind of questions, but just start noticing our paying attention to our hunger mm -hmm. and working toward eating according to that, as opposed to some other external influence. So yep. there you go. Sounds that's good. that's the next principle of intuitive eating is learning to honor our hunger. Mm -hmm. And it sounds yes. super simple and super basic, but unfortunately, it's, yeah, yeah, it's not as easy as it that's, that's not the world we live in. So oh, it's detective, something we need to work at. Detective work. Yes. Go ahead and put on your like yes. your skull cap. Is that what it's <laughs> called? The skull cap? What's it called? Where the um Sherlock cap. Oh, not a skull cap. What is that called? I don't know. I don't remember. Well, anyway, put on a cap. <laughs> Pay some attention. Get out of it. Make, make up a detective name yeah, for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And 
nourish your body and your soul this yep. week. All right. Have a good week, everyone. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Hey, if you want to help us grow our, this podcast that we're having fun doing, like and subscribe. And comment. Oh, yes. Please comment. We will comment back. Yes, we will. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's Tracy. If this was helpful and you'd like more, follow me on Instagram at tlastel.nourishingbodyandsoul or on Facebook or YouTube at Nourishing Body and Soul. Or you can find my website at nourishingbodysoul.com. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishing Body and Soul, the podcast. Before we wrap up, we just want to remind you that the information we share in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended for medical advice. While we hope you find our discussions helpful, we strongly recommend that you seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider before making any changes to your diet, exercise routine, or any other aspect of your health. We also want to make it clear that the host, guests, and producers of this podcast are not responsible for any adverse effects or consequences that may result from the use of any information or suggestion discussed in this podcast. We care about your well-being, but we can't take responsibility for individual outcomes. By listening to this podcast, you agree to indemnify and hold harmless the host, guests, and producers of this podcast from and against any and all claims, damages, liabilities, costs, and expenses arising from your use of the information provided in this podcast. We're so grateful for your support and we hope you keep listening and learning with us. Thanks.